we can get a, a lot of good foot napping tools off of a, a small set of antlers like this. The main beams we can use as billets or punches. The tines we can use as pressure flakers are also uh, small punches. And uh, it's nice that we have the skull on it because we can work into this bone and it works the same as a billet. You get more life out of your tools when they're on the skull like this than you do if they're just drop sheds. So I'll take one of these, I'll cut one of these off using a piece of flint and break it and then take this apart and then work it from there. So I think I can start by breaking this in half and knock the end off for sort of napping the bone here. back off. Just kind of break it in half. Okay, now this piece, I'll have to grind that off later. And I think that probably allow a little bit of a curve in this. I'll probably score it and break it off in this area right here. So I'm going to turn the camera off and we'll get a piece of flint and we'll do that. I just saw it right away now that I've got a, a good spot. I'm not cutting it very straight because i got a curve in that flake. There's a lost leg. I broke the ear off. Wonder if that'll work. Hey, that's not doing bad. That's what they use these for. Sometimes, really beveled points that are worn out and just about done where they just look like they were just beating them up. That's probably because they were, you know, towards the end of the life of a knife, you know. They'd, they'd realize there wasn't much life left in it and they just go ahead and use it for stuff they normally wouldn't. It's really sawn in there. You can see how much of that I've cut away. I need to do a little bit more on that side. This antler has strength, even when it's connected in little areas. It's like if you can imagine cutting a tree down. You want to make sure that you get your notch at the right angle and just below where you cut the back, or else that tree does funny things and has a lot of strength still. So, I'm gonna get this area. I'm gonna cut a couple minutes to turn this camera off. Okay, I scored it for about another minute or so, and I, th I think that's deep enough. Let's try to pry that off. Let me find a, a ledge. Here's what we'll do. I don't think I'll hurt the porch if I use the porch. So let's find a crack. I don't know, this wood might be too soft. Whoops. Oh, that's not good. Good thing we didn't really need that curve anyhow. That surprises me, that tip broke off. Boy, that'll never come out of there. Hmm. Yeah, I'll see. All right, hold on. Okay, I found something more traditional. Since the Abos didn't have porches, I'm gonna use the these old limestone cornerstones. I'll just try to pry it off there. And if that doesn't work, I'll hit it with a hammer stone. This isn't... This might be really funny if I break the tine again. I don't want to do that. Hmm. Things should be weak enough. You wonder how the deer broke them off. Sometimes they, they break them off far. And you, you know how much pressure they need to apply to do that.
There. See? That broke right where I wanted. Now, I just have to climb down the slippery window well to get my antler out. Hmm. Here's our tine. There's the break on it from scoring. Here's the little end that broke off. Uh, that actually worked pretty well because sometimes when they're really curved on the end, they're hard to use as pressure flickers. So, and it's actually not bad that that broke off like that. And you find things like these in dry rock shelters all the time. You know, sometimes you find them um, pretty fresh like this. Here's what the the other end looks like, and this is common. You see antlers like this all the time in the archaeological record, too scored and broken. And our knife, if you look at the kind of use wear that's on there, you can tell even that that bone was cut. Some of these back flakes that you get off of beveled edges um, are pretty distinctive. I actually held up pretty well. Now I was going to cut the rest of these off and make a billet and a punch, but I think now what might be a better idea is I'll just take this time, I'll take a piece of sandstone momentarily and put a nice tip on it, and then I'll just pick up one of these flakes and I'll pressure flake an arrow point just using this tool. This is actually a really neat piece of the St. Louis limestone, I guess. That's probably a hundred years old. And it's got the original chisel marks on it. They're stone it, and it's actually just a perfect grinding stone for what we need. So, I'll just take this antler time and so you can see just about a few swipes is all we need. Make it kind of pointy. That's about right. There we go. Okay, I selected a flake from outside. This is a just a piece of heat-treated Burlington shirt. It's got a nice orange color to it. And it's fairly flat, so it'll make a... And it's already pretty thin, so that's a good flake to start with. And I'm going to use my little pressure flaker I just made. And I'll probably use a Ulna Deerbone pressure flaker to notch this thing, but... I'm just going to make a real simp and quick uh, scalar and corner notch like late woodland arrow point and I'll show you how, how really how easy it is to take one of these flakes and, and pop one of these out. You can practice snapping in, in a couple weeks or months and be making really nice arrow points. And I mean, You can get really involved with these things too and obviously make them really perfect and everything but um, I'm going to get my little abrader. Hold on really quick. I okay, I'm going to use this hammer stone and sort of shape this thing a little bit to start with so I'm not doing all this scrunching with the antler. 